Hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna plant out some corn. And before we do that, we actually are gonna do a little bit of bed prep. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about just some basic requirements if you're gonna be planting corn. Some really good tips I think I have because I've been failing at corn now for two years. I've tried growing corn for two years and failed both years. And as we fail, we learn, right? At least we should be learning as we fail. That's the only way we really can learn. Um, so I've picked up some tips and things along the way and I've also done some research recently. This winter time, I uh, came across a YouTube channel. They're called Haas Tools and they actually are really have some great information on growing corn. They've been growing corn their whole lives. It's a family thing. Um, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful channel. So a lot of the information I'm uh, going to have in this video comes directly from them. Just got to give them a little bit of a shout out here. So one of the things that they recommend actually is the spacing. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the feeding, the watering, um, and the variety, of course. So the variety, all of this is really, really important. The timing of it, the variety. Let's start out with this variety here. I have some corn. It's called Silver Queen. And Silver Queen is probably the standard variety of corn. A lot of old timers love it, still use it over actually a lot of the newer varieties. It's an old heirloom that's really well adapted to a lot of locations and unideal environments. Uh, especially areas that maybe don't get as much water as others, right? Corn is a grass and requires a lot of water, requires a lot of food. And I would rather not have to feed all that much and really not have to water all that much. Um, so I'd rather go with something that's a bit easier to grow, like the Silver Queen or like an heirloom variety of corn. Um, and also it's getting great flavor reviews. So it seems like a no-brainer. Um, going with the Silver Queen. Now you may want to pay attention to whatever it is, whatever variety you guys are growing, figure out what the type of corn it is. That's really important. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, however, something that's super big is the spacing here because I've had bad pollination for years and we used to do this just in a block. I maybe would have a, a you know, a three by three space, nine square feet, and I would try to put as many corn plants as I could in a square foot gardening method style. And that just doesn't work. Uh, but at least for me, I got really poor pollination that way. And I think the, the corn plants were just too close. So what I've done is really just a very typical planting of corn that you would see across many universities would tell you is to do it in a square. Okay, first off, not a rectangle, a square. This is not exactly a perfect square, but it's pretty close. It's 10 feet wide by seven feet long. We have four different rows of corn. Um, you wanna have as many rows of corn as you can. Four rows is probably the standard. Each row is spaced 30 to 36 inches apart. And in the rows, you could do anything between a four and 12 foot or 12 inch spacing. So, and the reason for that, why it varies so much is because if you're gonna be watering these heavily throughout the season and you're gonna be feeding them quite often, uh, you can afford to space them quite closer. But if you are not doing that like I am, I'm gonna space them actually eight inches apart, somewhere between the four and 12 inch mark. Um, that way I'm gonna have the best success for me. So the, the wider you put them apart, uh, the, you know, the less requirements there needs to be in food and water. So it's just a little bit of a tip there. Um, not that my soil isn't very fertile, but you know, the just natural soil conditioner that I use is not really the most nutritious stuff. You need to have something to supplement this and feed this over time. I do subscribe to the no dig method of, of growing vegetables where you don't really till. You just put down compost year after year. You keep adding that up. You get a lot of organic material. And that's a wonderful method. And it really does provide the fertility that a lot of these plants and vegetables need. But I'll tell you, corn seems to just need a little bit extra of something. So we're giving it the fertilizer here. I may even do this a bit later in the season as well. Two doses. I probably should have done this organic stuff about a month ago when I put this bed down or created this bed because it does take some time for this organic fertilizer to break down, but we've got it all in here in the rows. We've got four rows again, 30 to 36 inches apart. Within the rows, we're gonna have eight to 12 inch spacing. I'm gonna put 
two seeds per hole in the trench and um, we can thin them out. You can always thin this out. We, don't, we can always go a little bit thicker if we want rather than, rather than too thinly. So just a, just a little tip there. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been seeding things in the past. I'm gonna break this up a little bit. As I said, I've been stepping all over this bed for a month and it is a bit compacted. I wanna break this up and work in the organic fertilizer. And that I think will help the breakdown process of the organic fertilizer and uh, get that fertilizer in the soil to the plants quicker rather than uh, than later, sooner rather than later. And I'm not gonna go too deep with this and really till all that much. You know, just the top layer here of the compost, we're breaking this up and then we're mixing it in here and then flattening it back out, creating ourselves a nice seed bed. That's all we want here, guys. Now, the top layer of the soil is actually quite dry, but it doesn't really matter because underneath is where all that moisture is. And uh, you can really see that when I start to till this up a bit, you can see the fact that, oh, actually, there is a lot of moisture in the soil. Now, I, that means, ideally, I don't have to water after I plant these seeds, but you know, it's a good idea and I think I will. Um, what we should be doing is caring about the timing and that's what I wanna talk about right now. The timing of the planting. The big one that a lot of people mess up with corn and squash and melons and all kinds of things similar to that, that need a lot of heat. They need the soil temperatures above 60 at least. Here in the Northeast, mid-May, June 1st is a great date on average. We need to have soil temperatures above 60 consistently. Today was about 65. Uh, the soil is not precisely just yet 60. It probably is at this very moment. Um, but it's going to be a lot warmer than 60 over the next 10 days. The 10 day forecast looks wonderful. I'm seeing things in the 80s, believe it or not. Uh, the nighttime temperatures are quite warm. This is a warm location. So just overall, I am gonna have good success here in this particular spot. Now we're making our trench. If there's any compaction along the way, I'm just breaking that up. Now, so now we know the timing here because if we don't have the right soil temperatures, we just will not simply have success. And what you can do to give yourself a little bit of extra soil temperatures is use some mesh, some row cover. This mesh row cover will actually increase the soil temperatures and the plant temperatures about three to five degrees. And I highly recommend that if you are growing vegetables, invest in some mesh, guys. All right, so we got our trench. Let's get our seeds now. All right, two seeds here at the end. Two seeds, eight inches from the other seeds. Another eight inches, two seeds. And I'm just gonna do this all the way down the row. And we'll thin out the strongest ones careful of birds. Birds love these corn seeds, guys. If you don't bury these things a bit deep and uh, maybe you wouldn't even protect the soil with the row cover I was mentioning. Otherwise the birds will eat these seeds up and you won't get a crop. So big recommendation there. All right, that's done. We seeded them. We're looking good. We just got to cover this up. You know, you want your corn seeds, guys, about a half inch or so below the soil surface. You want the right soil temperature, get a thermometer. Don't guess. Know that you guys got some good soil uh, temperatures and good temperatures ahead in the forecast. Do it before rain. We're gonna come in here and water this in. If not, and uh, that's it. Throughout the season, I'm gonna be watering this we attached a, actually another hose line over here. So just so I could water my corn, 
we're feeding it now. We may do another second application and I'll keep you guys updated on this, all right? Um, I wanna thank everybody out here who watched. I wanna thank the guys over at Haas Tools. Those guys really know what they're talking about and I hope that I have myself finally a successful crop of corn. I think this is probably uh, a real easy way to get good pollination with the spacing, the feeding, the watering is gonna ensure that my plants get to the right height. I have good ears, good size on my ears of corn. Um, and we'll be, uh, we're off to the races now, guys. It's finally getting warm out here. Finally. All right. We'll see you guys uh, for tomorrow's video. Consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it. And check us out on Facebook and Instagram and our blog, figboss.com. See everybody soon. Take care, guys.